Our mission here is we were on a search and recovery dive. We mm -hmm. found a solid gold bar on the bottom. Great. And we want to bring that thing up to the surface. I would. Um, but we need to know how much flotation we need. What we can do is we can lift up our own little mini Titanic. What you need to do is you need to have your Titanic gold bar, whatever you're lifting up, and you need to weigh it. This one happens to weigh 10 grams. Conveniently, when they did the measuring systems, one liter equals one kilogram, so one milliliter equals one gram of fresh water. And so to lift this up, 10 milliliters needs to be displaced. So How are you going to work out 10 milliliters of displacement? Right now we have 490 milliliters of water. So let's see how much this cork displaces. And it displaces about... 20 milliliters? Yeah, 20 milliliters. 510. This is 10 grams. Yep. This displaced... 20. 20 milliliters. Yes. So what do you think? It'll float or sink? It will float. It'll float. So if we were able to attach this to the gold, it'll end up on the surface? Yes, it would. Oh, yeah. Your hypothesis is correct. Beautiful. Daniel used Archimedes' principle to raise the Titanic. And who's the Greek guy who uh, sat in the bath and discovered the Well, that would be Archimedes, yeah. who was trying to figure out this water displacement problem, and then went to sit down in a bath, and as he sat down, the water level went up, and he screamed, Eureka! Archimedes' principle. Any object, wholly or partially immersed in a fluid, is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. Using the same principle, Bryson has come up with a different solution. Okay, so what I did here is I took my Titanic, which is a fish weight, and I connected it to two plastic bags that I also connected to these tubes. And when I blew into it, air comes into the bags and it raises the weight. When we go diving, we use our BCDs, buoyancy compensation devices, to control our position in the water column. If we pump air into the BCD, we become more buoyant and float. And if we let the air out again, we become less buoyant and sink. Just like the plastic bags in Bryson's experiment. We're doing dive science, and we've got this scuba diver. This is a Cartesian diver. Okay, and uh, show us what happens. Well, when you squeeze this, pressure increases and it sinks. And why does it sink? Well, the increasing pressure compacts the air inside of there and makes the airspace smaller, making it sink. If you wanted it to be negatively buoyant, you'd have to add more weight. Yes. And if you wanted it to really float and be positive, add more air, mm -hmm. more displacement. So that's kind of like yeah. us with our BCs. Yes. So if we want it to sink now, we need to have less volume. Yeah. Uh -huh. And to get less volume, you're going to increase the pressure. Okay. This is really cool. Having seen the effect pressure has on volume in the lab, Megan decides to investigate its effects in the field. We filled the test tube up, so we measured how many milliliters of water it could actually take, and it was 20, so then we worked out that 10 milliliters was half. When at normal level, the test tube won't have anything in it, but when it gets to two atmospheres, which is double what we have here, it'll fill up half the test tube with water. The pressure at sea level is one atmosphere. For every 10 meters that you go down, the pressure increases by another atmosphere. So, at 10 meters or 33 feet, the pressure is two atmospheres. The volume of any air in your body or your dive gear will decrease as you go deeper because of this increase in pressure. At 10 meters or 33 feet, the volume is half that of what it was at the surface. And at 20 meters, it will have decreased to a third of its original volume. Dreddy had 300 milliliters of air in his beaker at 10 meters or 33 feet. You can see that as he reaches the surface, the pressure has halved from two atmospheres to one. And so the volume of air has doubled from 300 to 600 milliliters. The human eye has evolved over millions of years to receive and interpret light that has passed through air to reach it. When we go diving, the light has also passed through water, which dramatically alters how our eyes interpret the signal. Three different things happen to light as it moves from air to water. The first of which is refraction. Essentially, the light bends, making everything underwater appear 25% bigger and 25% closer. Secondly, the individual photons of light scatter as they hit suspended particulate matter in the water. Our eyes interpret this as a loss of contrast and therefore a reduction in detail. Finally, traveling through water uses up a lot of light's energy and the longest wavelengths, i.e. the color red, rapidly disappear the deeper you go, followed shortly thereafter by orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, just like a rainbow. <laughs>